welcome everybody you're welcome to today's live session um please tell us where you are joining in from tell us where you're joining in from i know that it's been a while since we had um this uh, classes right where we usually you know pick a topic that is relevant to parenting to raising children in today's world and then we talk about it try to proffer solutions and all of that um it's been a while we had that and i'm super excited that we are back here again yeah on this journey so please tell us where you're joining us from and i want you to also share this video i want you to share this video right share this video and um you know let more people join us in this conversation yes so today i'm going to be talking about something really um interesting something that you know every parent can uh every parent can attest to the fact that they have experienced it in some measure in their home and that is lying i'm going to be talking about lying right this is actually going to be a very short class um but you know i just decided that we needed to hear this message today all right so um okay so this link should go out um, okay so for those who do not know me my name is sandra luadari i am a parenting coach and a child behavior consultant and i am the founder of winning in parenting and the rock academy so i'm just going to go right ahead and um shoot yeah so now we know that as parents we have experienced lying in one way or the other yeah from our children some would say it's a white lie others will say it's just a lie to you know get out of a bad situation and all of that but whatever it is a lie is still a lie and the thing about lying is that it's actually a developmental milestone like for a child to think up a lie for a child to sit down and you know he's able to think of something that can help him get out of a particular situation. It is actually a milestone that that child has hit, right? Now, the way we handle such situations or the way we handle such um, experiences with our children will determine to a large extent how they will turn out. It will determine if the child is gonna get deeply rooted in that habit called lying which is not a good habit at all or is going to determine how quickly the child is able to speak up truthfully you know not minding whatever the consequences will be so really it's about us parents because i mean the child is becoming self-aware the child knows that okay if i say this i can get out of this trouble if i say that i can actually get a reduced consequence right but if we don't tackle this issue intelligently we find that we are unknowingly setting up our children to become liars or professional lie tellers i know that no parent wants that for their children so i want you to listen as we go into um, this conversation now why do children lie why do children lie it's so funny it's so should i say strange that even a two-year-old i mean that's that's when lying actually begins from around that time right and you are wondering i mean how did this child know that if he says this or that you know he's going to get off the hook how did the child know that if he twists the the story all right to the opposite direction He's not going to get punished well that's what i said at the beginning of this class yeah lying is like 
a developmental milestone that children achieve but the important thing is you need to know how to stop it right in its tracks right before it gets out of hand you need to know what to do because that a child is trying to get out of a situation or trying to cover up or, what, or whatever it is shows you that the child is intelligently thinking the child is is, is um, exercising his critical thinking skills his problem solving skills but the thing is he's not using it the right way because whether it's a white lie or a bad lie lying is lying all right so what are some of the reasons why these children lie now the first thing is that children are lying because they want to cover up they want to cover up their tracks they want to avoid getting um, punished they don't want you to scold them they don't want you to um, hit them all right and so they quickly think of something that can get them off the hook and this is why we need to be very careful in the way we carry out discipline on our children what are your discipline strategies are you that parent who would hit who would yell who would you know do all sorts label your child call the child names you know because they have done something wrong well if you are that kind of parent your child is going to tell a lot of lies yeah and that will be you unknowingly leading your child on in the path of lying because i mean nobody wants to be yelled at nobody wants to be beaten nobody wants to be spoken to in a derogatory manner all right so once you keep labeling your child you keep telling them their life history you give them a million and one reasons why you think they are bad children because they have told a lie hey get ready because they are going to tell more lies right so children most times lie to cover up their tracks now let's flip the coin what would happen if you are a more calm parent and by calm i don't mean that you permit everything i don't mean you are a permissive parent all right being a calm or gentle parent doesn't mean you are the parent that allows anything to go right like you are anything goes parent no that's not what being a calm parent mean means you can be a calm parent with all of your all of your um strategies your top notch strategies in place you can be a calm parent and your children will not even take you for a ride because you understand what you are doing but most times we forget that there's a ripple effect you know when it comes to dealing with our children every single action you take when it comes to relating with your children has a ripple effect if you are fond of um, um, verbally abusing your children calling them all sorts of names don't think it's going to stop there it's not going to stop at that situation you are confronting it's going to go beyond when your child goes to his room to sleep at night he's going to begin to reminisce on the things that you have said he's going to remember those things and he'll begin to think that oh he's worthless he's no good he can't do anything right he's, he's just fond of making so many mistakes all the time that is what is going to be going on in the head of your child if that child goes to school and he makes a mistake and the teacher says you are just so dumb the child is going to remember what you have been telling him at home and be like oh i think my teacher is right i think i'm really dumb oh i'm just so stupid i can't do anything right i can't get anything right that is exactly what the child is going to be thinking about so everything you do every action you take as you deal with your child is programming your child either positively or negatively so if you find that your children are lying to cover up their tracks you also need to retrace your steps to know why they are not even comfortable to tell you the truth all right so that is one of the reasons why children lie and then another reason is that they just want to avoid trouble it's also related to the first point i shared all right they are trying to avoid trouble because they know that 
there is no room for mistakes in their home. And that's why we need to cut children some slack. I'm not saying you should permit misbehavior, but I'm saying that your home should be such that mistakes are not or failures are not final. There's actually, there are lessons that can be learned when mistakes are made. There are lessons that can be learned when somebody fails in the family, right? So we shouldn't, our, our homes shouldn't be caught in stone. Like if it's not this way, it's the highway. If it's not like this, it's that. It's not, our homes should not be this or that. It can be this and that, right? Because the truth is when children understand that, oh, I mean, if I say the truth, or if I come out plain to say this is what happened, this is what happened, they already have an inkling of what's going to happen. They know that in their home, it's like everybody's sitting on a keg of gunpowder. The next statement somebody makes, mommy can explode, daddy can explode, and they begin to, you know, um, hit us, or they begin to yell, or they begin to talk to us in an aggressive manner. A child who is growing up in that kind of home is definitely going to tell a lie because he or she is trying to avoid trouble. I mean, nobody likes trouble. Even the children that you label as troublesome, they don't like trouble, right? They don't like trouble. It's a matter of programming. How are you programming your children? Understand that all your actions have a ripple effect on your child. So if your previous actions have shown the child that, oh, when I pour water on the floor, oh my God, mommy is going to deal with me like, you broke my plate or you tore my book, I mean, you're going to face the consequences. That child is going to tell lies to avoid trouble. It's not because the child cannot be confident enough to, you know, speak up or speak the right thing, but the child is just trying to avoid issues. Right, so this is another reason why children tell lies. They want to get out of trouble. They don't want your trouble, right? And that's why we really need to be careful as parents because it's so easy to label children like, oh, this child is so stubborn. This child is problematic. I mean, oh God, what did I do to deserve this kind of child? It's so easy to talk about uh, um, children in that perspective, but was that child like that from the beginning? How did you program that child to get to the point where the child is not even comfortable enough to say, oh, mommy, I did this. Daddy, I did this. What happened in the home? What happened in the home that led to such, um, how am I going to put it? That led to such, um, what word will I use now? That made the child believe that he cannot speak up, right? You need to go back to the drawing board to begin to think about that why is this child at the point where he cannot even you know confidently tell me what is going on right now that's another thing we need to think about another reason why children are going to tell lies is because they want to explore they want to know what's on the other side of a particular behavior so they um they you tell them not to touch the fruits in the fridge right so everybody has had their share and oh my god why is this insect disturbing me so you have told them that okay so everybody has had their share right and the the portion in the fridge is for the next meal and then a child you leave the home or you're busy doing something and then the child begins to think okay so I've always been obedient, right? When mommy says, don't take this thing, I don't take it. So what would happen if I even try to take it? Maybe I should try to take it and see what will happen. All right, so sometimes children tell lies to test what's on the other side of the truth, right? They want to know what will happen when they tell a lie. They want to see your reaction. And you know, children are bound to explore excuse me children are bound to explore children are bound to test boundaries because that's how they actually learn children learn by exploration so for the younger ones they're going to try touching things they'll try pulling down your bag or your 
home, your deco in your home, and until you scold them, until you say, hey, don't touch it, don't pull it down, leave it, don't go there, right? Until you begin to um, create those boundaries and say, no, don't jump on the chair, they will go ahead to jump on the chair because that's what they are about. They are about exploring exploration. That's how children learn, right? Now, if you don't have your boundaries and your consequences in place, they will definitely take you for a ride. So you have all of those beautiful decors, right? Um, displayed in your home and then your child is exploring the child goes and he pulls one down and he breaks it he goes he pulls the other one down the child will think it's acceptable behavior the child will think it's a normal thing to do until you get up and say you know what this is not acceptable this is not something you should be doing right until you get to that point the child is not going to do the right thing. And that's why sometimes when parents are scolding their children, they're saying, oh, this child is misbehaving and all of that. Check yourself. Have you really given the child boundaries? Have you really told the child what is unacceptable behavior? Have you really told the child that, you know, in this home, this is what we don't tolerate. This is what we don't do until you are able to clearly express your expectations for your child's behavior they might not give you the results you want all right you must be able to explicitly explicitly state what you want from your child for example you want your child to wake up in the morning you know tidy his or her room you're not just going to say wake up in the morning when you wake up in the morning please tidy your room especially if your child is one that is not able to take a series of instructions if your child is one that you have to break instructions you know for then the child cannot really do well with that set of instructions you can't just say um please shut the door you can't just say oh wake up and tidy your room no you have to tell the child when you wake up you have to put your things on one side take your dirty clothes to the laundry basket um, uh, make sure your bed is well laid out and make sure you sweep the floor for some children you would need to give the instructions in a very explicit manner but for some other children they can easily assimilate just tell them oh when you wake up in the morning just tidy your room do you understand so children tell lies sometimes to explore what is on the other side of the truth so if i take this milk that mommy asked me not to take if i go out after 7 p.m what would happen and god help you if you are a parent who is permissive and then the child flouts your orders the child takes that milk or the child goes out after 7 p.m and the child comes back and you're like um okay so why did you go out when i asked you not to go out and then you're like make sure you don't do it again no the child is definitely going to do it again because the child can see that, oh, clearly you don't have any consequence for him for flouting your orders. But when the child gets back and you say, okay, even though you are a calm parent, you say, okay, so you decided to flout my orders. I said, don't take the milk, you took it. And then I said, no outings after 7 p.m. And then you went out. Okay, so for the next six weeks, you're not going to go out, right? So if you do something like that, the child knows that. There are consequences in place for unacceptable behavior, right? Now, we must understand that this is another reason why children tell lies. The first one is to cover up their tracks. The second one is to explore what's on the other side of telling the truth, right? And for you not to fall into this trap, you need to have your consequences and your rules in place. Now, another reason why children tell lies is because they have a low self-esteem children may have children may begin to tell lies because they have a low self-esteem and when they realize that they have a low self-esteem they want to appear they want to inflate their self-esteem by all means they want to inflate their personality and you know what why are children having low self-esteem we also need to point the fingers back to ourselves parents 
we need to understand why these children are just growing up with low self-esteem. Like I said earlier, all our actions as parents have ripple effects. The way we relate with our children have ripple effects. Your, the way you speak to your child or the way you discipline your child or the way you love your child is not going to stop there at that situation. It's not going to stop there, you know, when that thing happens. It's going to go further, right? When your child is alone, your child is going to be thinking and recalling everything you say to him. It's going to be remembering how you love him. It's going to be remembering that, oh, no matter what happens, my mom loves me. My dad loves me. No matter what I do, the child is going to recall how safe he feels in his family, right? So we need to understand that we need to be conscious and cautious, all right, when we are relating with our children. I'm not saying you should let misbehavior slide yes thank you ma'am i'm not saying we should let misbehavior slide but i'm saying that we must understand that whatever you do is like seed time and harvest right what you sow into your child's life you will reap if you keep sowing fear you keep sowing up labeling you keep rubbing the child's history on his face whenever he makes a mistake you will reap it one of the ways you will repeat is that that child is going to have a damaged self-esteem. And this is one of the reasons why children tell lies. So they are in a group of people and they know that, oh, they know that, oh, um, this person is all that and more. This person, oh, everybody likes this person and nobody is coming to him. Nobody is even looking his direction and all of that. That child is going to tell an elaborate story of himself. Instead of the, the child to say, oh, I live in Urbanikoro or I live somewhere like, I'm not saying um, that area is bad or something, you know. The child is going to try to elevate his standard for no reason. I mean, nobody is asking you to do that. But because the child sees himself poorly, like the child sees himself as below who he really is. The child sees himself as not good enough. The child is going to start trying to blow his trumpet the child is going to try to inflate who he really is he's going to say oh my dad bought an aircraft like my dad got a private jet last week and it's a lie it's a lie but is it really the child's fault what foundation have you laid for that child what foundation have you laid for that child how come that child feels that oh i need to inflate my personality before I can be accepted. So this is another reason why children tell lies. They have a low self-esteem and they want to feel good. They want to get the approval of people. And that's why we need to help our children to understand their identity. We need to make them understand that it's not about what they wear. It's not about the schools they attend. It's not about the kind of food they eat or the kind of house they live in. We need to make them understand that they are much more than all of that. We need to make them understand that they are core their inner core is actually what defines them right this is so important i mean it's one of the best things you can do for your child as a parent right so children want to feel good like they want to get the approval of others they want to join that group they want to feel among so they sugar coat everything they want to say i mean they ate um uh, what's it called now Maybe they ate uh, beans last night. Beans is one of my favorite food, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not saying beans is uh, for a particular class of people. But So this child ate beans last night. And the child might just get into a group of people because he wants to, because everybody said, oh, I had dinner in the U.S. last night. I had lunch in the Bahamas and all of that. He too will come and say, oh, I had um, some burgers. I had french fries. I had um, pina colada and all of that. Uh, for dinner do you understand what i'm saying like he's going to blow things out of proportion because he wants to feel among and that's because that child is having issues with his self-esteem that child is actually making a mistake thinking that he has to look a particular way he has to speak a particular way he has to talk he has to um live in a particular place before he can be accepted you love beans too oh yes i love beans right thank you you know so this is so important now let me let me quickly this class is going to be a very short class so i need to run faster now 
Another reason why children tell lies is because they want to, um, they, they want to, um, they don't think, let me put it that way. So these children are very impulsive and one of the reasons why children are impulsive is because they are, part of their executive functioning skills is not fully developed, right? I think sometime, um, maybe the next month or later this month, we're going to have a class on that. Now, because children are still developing, right? They are impulsive. So, some children cannot manage their emotions at all. Now, we have five-year-old children who can actually manage their emotions properly. They can regulate their emotions. They know what to do to calm themselves. They have the right coping skills. And, of course, maybe they have been taught these skills by their parents. But there are some, I'm talking about five-year-olds now, but there are some eight-year-olds, there are some ten-year-olds who cannot manage their emotions, right? They are still impulsive, they overreact. Now, this could be as a result of a lot of reasons, right? It could be that the child has a diagnosis, it could be that the child has an attention problem like maybe ADHD, ADD, or ODD. The child has some kind of, um, um, what's it called, some attention problems, right? It could also be that the child has witnessed a lot of violence in his environment, maybe in his home or where he lives or in school or something, or the people, the adults around him. So this impulse of a thing could be as a result of different reasons. We'll probably talk about this in another class, right? But the reason why some children lie is because they do not even think about what they want to say before they say it. Like they are impulsive like that. Just they, they talk before they speak. And we even have some adults like that. They talk before they speak. Like they don't even process what they want to say. They just tell, they just, hey, I took it. I took it. Ah, they didn't take it. Did you touch the TV? Did you go there? Did you go to your friend's place? Oh, they've let it out. And then they now begin to rethink. And they're like, no, mommy, I did touch it. Do you understand? So these children are impulsive. They don't think before they act. They don't think before they talk. It's not like they are bad children, right? And it's also uh, like that for children who hit. Some children, their first response to situations. And that was why I said, this is as a result of a couple of factors. If you have a child who has experienced trauma, a child who is traumatized might respond in impulsive ways. Like, so a child who has lived through some very hard times, right, might be so protective of themselves. So you are coming close to the child, right? Thank you, thank you, ma'am. So you are coming close to a child. The child cannot even see, you don't want, you don't have any intention of hurting the child. But because that child's response to trauma is impulse, like impulsive action, as you are trying to approach the child, maybe you want to hug the child, the child just draws back, the child just reacts. That child, it's not like the child is bad. That is his or her own response to trauma, right? So the child is Im impulsive. The child just quickly draws back. He doesn't want you to hug him. He doesn't want you to come close. Even some adults are like that. There are some adults today that you can't touch. Before you touch them, you need to tell them, can I give you a hug? And that's how it's supposed to be really. You can't just, even in romantic relationships like husband and wife, you can't just come and hug them like that. The reason is that some of these people have lived through trauma and they have probably not unpacked this trauma. They have not healed from this trauma. So you can't just take them on our ways. You can't catch them on our ways. You can't just come and say, oh, I'm hugging you from behind. No, they will, they will give it to you. Like they will respond to you in a way that you don't like, right? Now, this also happens in children. So some children are just impulsive. It's not like they want to tell a lie, right? But they are just doing it because that's how they are wired and if you find that your children are like that you need to really work on them you need to help them develop that part of their reasoning faculty right you need to give them skill teach them skills you need to come up with games right activities that will help them you know move away from that um, impulsive behavior right
Now, another reason why children would also tell a lie is because they are forgetting what happened. <laughs> this is so subtle, right? But this is one of the major reasons why children tell a lie. So they might truly forget. And if they are telling you, when they now discover that, oh, that was actually a lie, when they are telling you, you might not believe them, you'll be like, ah, so how can you tell me that you forgot the truth? So for example, you asked a child to probably, so maybe the child has five different homework to do. The child has brought home five different homework, right? How do we help children who are impulsive? So, okay, so I, I think I'm going to have a class on this sometime this month because it's an elaborate topic on its own. But I will just say one thing, one or two things after this point I'm sharing, right? So, let's say the child has come up with five different homework, right? And then the child does four, four of the assignments. And truly, this child forgot that there's a fifth one, right? And then you come and you're like, oh, child, um, how, how, how did it go with your assignments? I'm sure you are done. And the child says, oh, yes, mommy, I'm done. Yeah, although I had some difficulties, but I did everything, right? And then the next morning, child is packing up and getting ready for school. And you realize that, oh, the fifth assignment has not been done right and then you're like okay so what happened yesterday you told a lie i asked you if you had finished up and you said yes right and then the child's like yes mommy i finished everything oh i didn't know i didn't know about this one now if you are not a calm parent you are going to hold that you are going to hold that against the child and the child is going to feel like, oh, if this happens next time, I'm just going to tell a lie. I'm just going to deny. I'm not going to say the truth. And that's why how we respond matters a lot. That's why how we respond matters a lot. Sorry, one minute. I'm live. Take okay and that's why sorry about that that's why we please shut the door thank you that's why we need to exercise we need to we need to become parents like imagine a child that truly forgot that there's a fifth homework and because you are so upset you're like there's no room for calm in the home you're like hey don't you keep telling lies, but I asked you. You said you finished up. Now, what is this? This assignment is not done. How are you supposed to go to school now? I mean, no, please answer this question. How will the child react the next time something happens and you ask the child, did you do this thing? The child is going to deny, the child is not going to tell you the truth because of the way you reacted in the previous situation. Right, so really and truly, some children tell lies because they forget to tell the truth. Especially those ones that are impulsive. They will tell you, I took it. I didn't take it, right? Because they've not even processed what they want to tell you. This is so important. Now, another reason, I'm going to quickly wrap this up now. Another reason why children are going to tell you lies is because they want to, um, they want to be polite, right? So, especially in this part of the world where, I mean, children have to be um, respectful, I'm putting that in quotes, it's good for children to be respectful and everything, but, you know, there are some times that children need to speak up. There are some times that children need to say it as it is. For example, if I use, um, uh, what's it called? If I use uh, a case of uh, a predator, as an example, so this predator is somebody that is in the child's family. The child respects this predator. Everybody in the family actually respects this predator. But because this person is so respected, the child already knows that if I tell the truth, if I tell my parents that this person is actually hitting on me, if I tell my parents that this person is making passes at me, if I tell my parents that this person is trying to 
you know, get, um, get me into his bed, my parents would not believe me. And they would say, I'm lying. So, so one of the reasons why children tell lies is because they want to be in a safe space, right? They, 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 we've been taught that, oh, don't talk to your elders like that and all of that. But we also teach children that, oh, when you find that this person wants to touch you in a way that is not nice, in a, if this person is trying to give you an unwanted touch against your consent, shout at the person or run away or tell the person to his face that blah, blah, blah and all of that. But in some parts of the world, especially here, they say, ah, why did you talk, why, why are you being so disrespectful? Why are you talking to uncle like that? Or why are you talking to auntie like that? They won't know what the child is guarding against. Nobody cares to listen to the child's side of the story. Everybody just wants the child to be polite. We just want the child to be good and respectful and all of that, not considering the fact that this child is actually you know, speaking up because she wants to stop a particular behavior. So that is another reason why children lie. And then they lie to protect others. They want to protect their parents. They want to protect their siblings. They want to protect the family. Or they even want to protect themselves, right? So they don't want to expose themselves. So you can actually say this is a white lie, but I mean, a lie is a lie, right? So they're saying these things, you know, to protect themselves like, oh, so, um, like, okay, do you like what I bought for you? Truly, deep in their hearts, they know they don't like that gift. They know they don't like it. But because they don't want you to feel bad, you say, oh, it's nice, I love it, right? And they can, you can also ask them, oh, um, has your sister eaten? Just because they don't want to collect your food, just because they don't want you to give their sister your food, that they are not sure of or maybe their parents have taught them you know never to accept things from people their sister is truly hungry but because they don't want to take your food they like to protect their sister like oh she's eating she's fine she's just okay oh we are okay even though they are dying in hunger they're like oh we are okay and all of that so these are some of the reasons why children you know tell lies and as parents like i have shared you know a couple of times we are actually responsible sometimes, in fact, a lot of times, for children telling lies consistently. We might not be responsible at first, right? But the way we, how did you react the first time your child told the lie? That is going to go a long way to determine if your child is going to keep lying to you or if that child is going to come out openly to you, right? This is so important. So. I mean, we need to go back to the drawing board as parents and ask yourself, what do you truly want for your child? Because it's not about your little wins that, oh, this child told a lie and I gave it to him. Like, I disciplined him. I made him understand that I am the boss. I made him understand that I'm the one in charge. Good. That is good. You can react that way. But I want you to remember that. It's not only about that time. It's not only about that situation. Yeah. Why is my I don't know. You can check check on that and check. And to shut the door. Yeah. We are on holiday. I know I know that. I, I know you know that we are on holiday, yes. So I'm having a lot of interruptions in this live session because of course my children are here with me as well. Okay. So as I was saying, oh I'm so glad that you enjoyed the session. Thank you so much, ma'am. So as I was saying, how you reacted to the last lie would will either for your child to tell you the truth the next time or it will encourage the child to keep telling you lies so you need to go back and ask yourself why am i raising this child am i raising a child because i'm competing a lot of parents don't actually know that they are in competition with their children and this is this is something that is so alarming like it's really growing at an alarming rate let me tell you something no true win happens when you and your child are not on the same team no true win happens when you and your child are not on the same team so you cannot just say oh yes i showed him i made the child understand that i'm the boss 
like he told the lie and I put him in his place. Yes, it's good to put your child in his place. It's good to let your child understand that you are the one in charge. But the how is also as important, even if, if, if it's even more important than the what. The how is as important, as, even if not more important than the what. So yes, you're making your child understand that, yeah, you don't tell lies and all of that. But how are you doing it? How are you passing that information across? Because you must not forget that no true win happens when you and your child are not on the same team. So after you have, yeah, made your child understand that, yeah, I'm the one in charge and all of that, how is your child feeling? That attitude that you have used to handle that situation, has it further pushed your child away? Has it pushed your child further away from you? Or is it bringing your child closer? The way you reacted to that situation, is it telling your child that I'm doing this because I love you? I'm doing this to protect you. I'm doing this to make sure that you grow up as a wholesome child. Is that the way the child is feeling? Or is the child feeling hated? Is the child feeling that, you know what, the next time this thing happens, I'm just going to look for one of my friends and tell him what I did. I'm not coming home to tell my mom anything because I mean, she, the way she, the way she talks to me, the way she scolds me, ah, I mean, it's like she's raining fire and brimstone all over me. Is that how your child is feeling? Remember, the how is also as important as the what. The how is as important as the what. So I want you to step back. I want you to think about the kind of child you want to raise. What kind of child do you want to raise? Are you raising a child who will give you the results you want short term? So what happens when you are not there to give the child instructions? What will the child do behind your back? Is the child obeying you today because he's afraid of you? Or is the child actually giving you the results you want because the child understands what you are trying to teach him? The child understands where you are coming from. The child understands that you are doing all of this for his own good. Now, these are two different things entirely. You need to understand the kind of results you are actually getting with your child now. For me, I'm up for the long-term results. I don't just want to shout at my children, hey, don't you dare put your hands on the walls. Don't you dare make a noise. Don't you dare hit your sister. If you try it, I'm going to hit you back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, so really next time your child will not put his hands on the wall. Really next time the child is not going to hit his sister. But trust me, that is short-term results you are getting. But when you enter the process with your child, when you decide to enter into your child's world, when you decide to say, okay child, this is the reason why you shouldn't be doing this. This and this and this. You outline a, a, a couple of strategies or a couple of points to note. For the child the child the child can even go ahead to teach another child the child can go ahead to educate his own younger sibling because you have taken him through the process you are not just shouting down orders and that's why a lot of children try out a lot of things the first time they leave home because you were all about telling them what not to do it's either my way or the highway you do this because mommy said so you do that because i don't want you to do that you're just raining and showering everything you want the child to do you are not carrying the child along so the first time the child leaves home the child wants to explore everything you asked him not to explore because while you were giving those instructions there was no why you were just there telling the child what not to do what not to do what not to do and what to do right so this is so important we need to go back and look in words who am i raising who do i want to raise this is so important being able to answer that question correctly explicitly not just answering it in your head being able to write it down to say yes this is the kind of child i want to raise oh my god it will do your parenting a great good right it will help you it will define your parenting it will give you a lot of perspective right it will it will put you in the right position to raise your child yeah now what another reason or another thing you can also do to help your child not to tell lies is to stop putting them on the spot don't you you know that your child did not do his chores you know the child did not wash the plates 
the child did not um, the child did not um, clean up all right after he left the bathroom so why are you asking the child you already know so why are you asking the child um, did you did you clean up after yourself after using the bathroom did you wash the plates you know that the child did not do that you are only setting up that child to tell you a lie the first thing remember i talked about children who tell lies out of impulse especially with children like that children who really think before they speak i mean they must have let it out they must have spoken or taken action before thinking about what they want to say or do especially for children like that the first thing they will tell you is yes i washed the plates i cleaned up after myself i did my homework but you know they didn't do it so when you put them on the spotlight like that you are encouraging them to tell a lie so when you know that they didn't do that particular chore or or if you truly don't know if they did it or not instead of asking directly did you do this or did you do that you can simply say oh how did it go with your homework how did it go with um, tidying up your room how did it go with washing the plates did you um, find it difficult or how was the experience and all of that when you ask your question that way you are giving your child more room to put his thoughts into perspective you're giving your child more time to decide to tell the truth right you are not you, the child understands that you are not coming to catch him red-handed like yes I, I caught you today you didn't do your homework yes you didn't wash the plates yes another session of scolding the child understands that that's not what you're trying to do so in a relaxed manner like so how did it go with your homework how did it go with cleaning up the house how did it go the child and if the child didn't do it the child is able to come up with better excuses that or uh, the child is able to say okay mom i i actually have not done it but i will do it uh, in fact let me get to it right now you know the child knows that you know that he has not done it and at the same time the child becomes appreciative of the fact that you are not calling him out abruptly you are not calling him out you're not putting him on the spot so the child is more regulated to either immediately go and start doing the right thing or the child had better come up with a good reason for not doing what you have asked him to do right so this is so important like we need to we need to understand that children are actually mirroring us so the way we react to situations the the, the way we speak to them the way we respond to them will also have a great impact on the way they respond to others, on the way they go through their own life, right? So we must understand that. Like I said at the beginning of the session, telling lies is actually a, a developmental milestone. I'm not saying it's right, but it's just like when children begin to say no, right? When children get to a stage, they begin to tell, you know, especially when they're approaching age two. You say, come and eat. They're like, no, 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 no. It's not because they are not hungry. It's not because they don't want to eat. But they have become self-aware. They've understood that, uh -uh, even though I'm hungry, I can take control of this area of my life now. I can decide to say no. If mommy says I should come and have my bath, I can decide to say no, right? Because they are becoming self-aware. They now see themselves as a complete human. So they want to test you, which is also a part of learning. It's not like they, they are being disobedient. They want to test you, right? And in a situation like that, the way you also handle it will determine if that attitude is going to extend or if it's going to be regulated. So the same thing also applies, you know, when it comes to lying. Now, who teaches children to lie? Did you teach your children to lie? nobody does that like from the cradle nobody nobody begins to tell a baby tell a lie and all of that they just begin to think intelligently they just begin to think you know i said something earlier in the session i said when you see children who tell lies it's like that is critical thinking in action that is intelligent thinking in action that is problem solving in action because you caught them red-handed or they know that they're in trouble and before you catch them or before you begin to ask them questions they have speedily thought about 
what to say. They've come up with 10 reasons why they did what they did. I mean, that's an intelligent child. In a negative way, though. So as a parent, what do you do? That's a skill. What do you do with that information? What do you do with that feedback that you are receiving? You know that this is a child who is able to think intelligently. It's just like children who are natural creative writers. Natural creative thinkers. Yes, thank you, sir. Lies with critical thinking and not backed up with positive moral values. Yes. Now, you find a child who is um, telling you a story. The child blows the story out of proportion. The child sugarcoats the story. And the child is telling you, like, yeah? But I was here when this thing happened. Where did all of this adjusta? Where did all of these additions come from? Right? Now, that is a feedback you should be able to work with as, a, as an intentional parent. That is a feedback you should know that, okay, and truly, this child might not be telling a lie. This child might be expressing his creative juices. Now, what you need to do is to give that child the right platform to develop that ability. Get the child a notebook. If we positively empower that skill, they will become solutions and constructive strategies. That is it. So this is a child who is thinking intelligently. Instead of saying, and the boy went to the house. The child will say, and the boy meandered through the stream and went up the hill and climbed a tree before he finally meandered his way to the house. These two people are saying the same thing, just that the other child is super creative. So find ways to give the child a platform where the child can learn, you know, and, you know, nurture that creative ability in the child. But don't forget that you also need to speak to the child and let the child know that, okay, you know what, this is not exactly how it happened, but I can see that you are really creative, right? So there's a thin line between lies and truth. So this is what you can do instead. I know you're trying to speak creatively. I know you're trying to write creatively. So let's go in this direction, right? This is now creative writing. So the child knows that this is the difference between lie and truth, all right? You are not just clapping for the child. Hey, my child is so creative. You are letting the child know all the possibilities, right? And you are also nurturing that ability in the child. So, like I was saying earlier, for a child to begin to think up um, reasons to tell you for not doing a particular task, that child has very good thinking skills, critical thinking skills, and problem solving skills. So it's a feedback for you to work with. You also need to let the child understand the line between lie and truth and you also need to let the child understand that you don't need to go this route if you want to pass your message across. And I can see that you are so smart. I mean, how on earth did you come up with these excuses? How did you come up with these things you are saying? You and I know that this is not the truth, but I, I love the fact that you are thinking. So here's what we are going to do. And then you lay out your strategies in place and everybody is fine. And don't forget that you are also going to affect your consequences. Yes, you shouldn't let them get off the hook when lies are being told so that they don't come back to do the same thing. So what you are going to do is that you are now going to redirect that ability to think critically, that ability to solve problems, to come up with solutions and constructive strategies like somebody, one of us here, um, said here in the comments, you will now get that feedback and redirect it positively to help the child. So, of course, this session cannot exhaustively deal with the issue of lying in children and what you can do about it as a parent, but I'm sure that you have learned um, a thing or two from this session. Let's see in the comments if you found the session um, interesting, if you found it valuable. Yes, so we're bringing back our live sessions. Like I said earlier, uh, it's been a lot of work on my plate and we stopped having these sessions for a while, but we're bringing them back now, right? Because a lot is really going on out there. And I mean, this is one of the ways that I can contribute my own quota to ensure that we raise wholesome and well-balanced children. So thank you for tuning in, everybody. I see one of uh, my favorite uh, coaches here, uh, Coach Abibo, and I also see 
I, oh, my, my darling husband is here too. I see you, Mrs. Um, Aminu. Uh, I see you all. Some other people joined and left at some point. Uh, and, and this was impromptu, actually. I just announced this live this morning. All right. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you all next week, Thursday. Yeah. So next week, Thursday, we are here again at 12 p.m. for another interesting session. Please share this video with everybody who needs to hear this message. I've been mean, so much, um, so much take home from this session. Yeah. So please share this video and I'll see you next Thursday. And please let's engage in the group. Thank you so much. It's bye for now. Yes, it's been a while. It's been a while, mom. Thank you. Bye for now.